The Thanksgiving turkeys are chosen for their temperament, and this afternoon an angry, if subdued, president pardoned one of two. Corn, I hereby grant you a full pardon. Thank you, Corn. This year's birds were named Corn and Cobb, but Steel and Rob is still what Mr Trump is alleging the Biden campaign is trying to do. Earlier, the president made an unscheduled appearance, claiming credit for a new stock market high. The stock market's just broken 30,000, never been broken, that number. That's a sacred number, 30,000. Nobody thought they'd ever see it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. He spoke for barely more than a minute, sounding like a general claiming a victory he knows the other side has won. Because last night, the federal agency overseeing the handover acknowledged Joe Biden as the apparent president-elect, making $6.3 million available to his transition team. President Trump then tweeted that the agency must do what needs to be done and that he had told his team to do the same. But he has still refused to admit that he's lost. Our case strongly continues, he wrote. I believe we will prevail. Yesterday, these officials in Michigan declared for Joe Biden, and today, Nevada and Pennsylvania confirmed their votes too. With a very big spike in the vote. Though Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, he of the running hair dye, is also running down the clock, pursuing every legal avenue to the point of exhaustion. So inside the White House, this halfway house, let the transition begin without using the word concede. That is, until enough Republicans say enough is enough. This afternoon, the president-elect appeared with his first cabinet picks. Beneath their masks, many are familiar faces, Obama-era retreads, seasoned pros in the room where it happens, not apprentices to be fired via Twitter. It's a team that reflects the fact that America is back, ready to lead the world, not retreat from it. Once again, sit at the head of the table. Last weekend, Mr. Trump sat out the climate change discussion at the G20 summit, preferring to play golf. The choice before him seemed stark. Run for re-election in 2024 or make money to pay off a widely reported $400 million debt. Maybe he'll do both, but leaving quietly seems unthinkable. A president stoking his base by going down with all guns blazing. Out with a bang and not a lame duck whimper. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, Washington. Well, joining me now, the former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, David Frum. He calls himself a conservative Republican and is a vocal Trump critic. He's just finished his second book about the outgoing president. Thank you very much for joining us. Are you beginning to believe that Trump is now going to go quietly? Can, you, can people breathe a sigh of relief? who fear that he's still well, trying to steal the election. It, it won't be quiet, but he, he will go. And that, that has been evident for, uh, for some time, that the, um, the legal arguments that, that President Trump tried to use were, were so meritless. Uh, they depended on a lot of many different local officials violating established law, not doing their duty, and behaving in ways that um, are un-American. I mean, uh, overriding votes and switching their state's electors to the defeated candidate instead of the winner, as has been done in every election time out of mind. But he won't be quiet. Um, he is trying to um, build a political constituency for after the presidency. And of course, we're about to move into the phase of the transition where President Trump begins issuing a lot of pardons uh, to cronies, to family, perhaps to himself. Well, I was going to say, we saw him pardon a turkey today. Is a turkey going to have to pardon Trump? Um, it's a very controversial question whether a president can pardon himself. It's, obviously, it's, it's never come up before because we've never had a, a president who needed it before. Um, in the case of Richard Nixon, the one president to receive a pardon, he, of course, left office first. Um, and opinion is strongly divided, with many legal scholars saying it's actually legally impossible. But what, whatever happens, Donald Trump, if he tries self-pardon, he will have to leave office not knowing whether that pardon is valid or not. He'll have to wait four or five years to be indicted, charged, convicted, and then go to the Supreme Court to waive his pardon paper and hear from them whether it's meaningful or not. What do you make of the appointees that we've heard from so far from Joe Biden? Some people are suggesting, well, it's a return to the same old, exactly the kind of Washington that brought Trump, you know, the swamp is back. 
Well, President Trump led the most corrupt cabinet in the history of the United States, and there really is no runner-up. And I, I did on Twitter, just a, going down memory lane, um, that President Trump's uh, e first EPA administrator used to send um, his security detail and taxpayer cards around to Ritz Carlton's to buy the special brand of moisturizer he liked to use. Um, Omarosa, who was in charge of President Trump's liaison with the black community, smuggled a recording device into the White House Situation Room to record colleagues to blackmail them when they tried to fire her for incompetence. So. I mean, the, the swamp creatures have been devouring it. And what we now have are people who represent um, a broad range of center to mildly progressive views in the national security area. Uh, I, I think the um, domestic policy may tilt a little bit more to the left than the national security does. Um, but these are people who actually have spent their lives not making money in corrupt ways. The new national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, spent his time out of power teaching a college course. They were, they were not grifting and grafting the way the Trump people did. Are you still comfortable, though, being a Republican, given how many people in the party have been supporting Donald Trump's efforts to turn over the election? Well, we have to fight that. First, we owe um, the success. The fact that the transition wasn't worse is owed to the efforts of many people at the state level whom no one had ever heard of before, uh, who were Repub the Republican Secretary of State of the state of Georgia, who had been a Trump voter, but who refused to do wrong. Uh, Republican officials in the state of Pennsylvania, a state with a Republican majority of the state legislature, who refused to do wrong. It was their efforts um, that made the difference. Um, this is also a party worth fighting for. Um, there are important differences that America is going to have to uh, deal with over the coming years. Um, do we address climate through regulations or through prices? Uh, how high should taxes go to repay the debt we incurred uh, during the COVID crisis? How serious a problem is debt? Do we fight for a world of free trade or uh, allow more Buy American policies? As President-elect Biden wants to do. So those are meaningful questions. But what I hope we have put behind us forever is the question, is it okay to overturn elections? Uh, do, uh, are our allies really our enemies and our enemies really our allies? Um, and should the president operate a business and take bribes while heading the government? I hope the answers to all of those questions are settled forever. David Frum, thank you very much indeed for joining thank us. You. Always good to hear your analysis.